Hello everyone! A bunch of you asked me why the Council of Six is only showing 5 members as you go through the 7.2 artifact quest lines, and the answer that can be found within the Mage or the Hall campaign. This story takes us back to the very start of Legion, where Ketgar and the Kirin Tor, they teleport Daladan to the Broken Isles to take the battle to the Legion, and it's Meryl Felstorm that shows up to ask for our aid. Thank goodness I've reached you! I need your help. Meryl was originally called Winterstorm, and he was such a powerful mage that he was able to bring himself back from the dead. In his time, Daladan had to deal with a nasty attack from the Dreadlord Kavranatir, who, with the Artifact Apocalypse, he was such a problem that the Council decided to pull their powers into one single being. Elodai was chosen to be the first Guardian of Tater's Fall, and with their powers combined into one, he was able to send Kavranatir back to the Twisting Nether, leaving only his sword behind. This was not the end of the Dreadlord's involvement, as he, many years later, he returned as a curse upon Valera Sanguinar. At the time, she was partying with Varian Rin and Brawl Bear Mental, when the warlock Vendelin Soulfire, he was sent out by Onyxia to take care of them. He used his magic to cast the mark of Kavranatir upon the poor Blood Elf, which allowed him to possess her, but over time Valera regained control. Now it's still unclear what changes are going to be made to this storyline, as Blizzard has already said that the events with Madan in the comics, that the story connected to all of this, that is no longer canon. Chronicle Volume 2, it even hints at Madan not existing at all, which means that we don't know for certain how the new story is going to play out. For now, we only have the old version to work with, and that version tells us that, eventually, Valera ends up in a confrontation with Jogal, who's working with the old god Gafoon, and they're trying to use Madame to bring about an ancient prophecy. He notices the Dreadlord inside of her, roaring to answer his challenge, and Valera sees no other option than to give in and let Kavranatir take control. Not even the Dreadlord is powerful enough to take on Jogal, not with Gafoon empowering him, but he is able to buy enough time for Meryl, Madame, and Valera to teleport away. The powers contained within Madame, they're noticed by Kavranatir, who wants to possess the boy, but Meryl steps in and offers himself his stead. A battle of will follows, with Meryl doing his very best to keep the Dreadlord within under control, and the tale ends with Cho'Gal defeated, and Meryl Felstorm decides to exile himself and hunt those of the Twilight's Hammer who still survive. That's the backstory to all of this, and like I said, we'll have to wait and see what the new version is going to be. What we do know for certain is that Meryl tried to banish the demon once and for all, but instead the Dreadlord broke free from his control. He has spent years trapped inside his body, and he must have learned his secrets, such as those of the Council of Tirisfall. Felstorm knows what the Dreadlord will do next, he will seek out an ancient relic called the Forge of the Guardian, used for centuries by the Council of Tater's Fall to infuse their power into the Guardian. The Forge was hidden away, its location known only to the Council themselves, and now the Dreadlord has this knowledge. We must go to the Violet Hold and stop him before it's too late. We must make haste to the Violet Hold. I will explain along the way. In ages past, the Forge of the Guardian was a source of great power for the Council of Tater's Fall. When the Legion learned of the Forge's existence, the Council knew it had to be hidden somewhere safe. It was secreted to the Violet Hold. Not only was this the most secure location in Dalaran, it was a place few would think to look. It seems my fears were well founded. The Dreadlord is already inside. We must hurry! It's over, Dreadlord. Your evil reign ends here. Pitiful wretch! You should have brought an army! What can one little mage do against the might of the Nathrezim? The Forge of the Guardian will be mine! You are pathetic. Your feeble spells cannot stop me. He's too strong. We need the power of the Forge! Find a way past his barrier! I'll try to keep him occupied! You will not escape so easily, little mage! Nice work! Now, destroy the rift siphoning power from the Forge! It's working! Activate the Forge! Take my power, champion! Banish this demon back from whence it came! I've had enough of you, Felstorm! Prepare to meet your end! I could... use a little... help here! <laughs> Now's our chance! Let's bring him down! 
fool! The Legion will know your secrets. Count your days, mage. I will return. It is done. Thank you, hero. Aladai! It is good to see you, old friend. Though I wish it were under better circumstances. The Dreadlord's defeat is only temporary. Once he regains his strength in the Twisting Nether, he will seek the Forge again. Then I know what must be done. Alodai, we need your help. We must take the Forge of the Guardian to a safer location. We will need its might if we are to defeat the Burning Legion. The Hall of the Guardian. It pains me to see it in such disrepair. The Hall hasn't seen any use since the disbanding of the Council of Tirisfall. The wards protecting this place are still strong. I think it will serve our needs. And what is your plan? I shall reform the Tiris Guard, and this mage will be its first champion. What say you? In times past, the Council of Tirisfall would call upon the Tiris Guard, the protectors of Dalaran, to do battle in the Guardian's absence, and they were even sent out to try and do something about the rogue Guardian Aquin. It is clear now that the Hall of the Tiris Guard must be rebuilt to face this new threat, and they need us to help them accomplish this. First, we learn how to get to the Hall with a brand new teleportation spell, and then we go out to claim an ancient artifact. In ancient times, the Forge of the Guardian was used to channel the power of the Council of Tirisfall into one single mage, creating a Guardian, but that's not its only use. It can only serve as a font of arcane energy, which can be used to manipulate and empower our artifacts. After using the forge and being on our way to reaching the artifact's true potential, it's time to begin recruiting other mages to our cause. Unfortunately, the protective wards surrounding the hall, they may be prohibitive to this. Meryl cannot personally teleport every single one of them to our location, but he does have a solution. In the city, there's a goblin who's a master of portals and teleportations by the name of Akazamzarak. He is what you would call a street performer, but a big tip, a big bag of coins, that should be able to convince him to change profession. Now that's what I call a tip! Show's over, folks, go on, scram! Get out of here, kid, you bother me. Time is mana, friend! Alright, let's see if I can get a portal through these wards you're talking about. Piece of cake! See you on the other side. Hey, 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 look at this! Nice place you got here! The Tiris Guard must not fail. All right, Akazamzarak. You have the locations. Do you think you can manage the portals? No sweat, chum. I'll get your mages here in a jiffy. Portals are good to go, boss. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna check out the digs here. Mages of Azeroth, I have summoned you here because we face a threat to the future of the world itself. The Dreadlord Kathranatir has escaped into the Twisting Nether, carrying with him the secrets of the Council of Tirisfall. We must hunt him down in the Twisting Nether. Only then will we know his knowledge cannot be used against us. Will you join us and take up arms against the Legion? The Tiris Guard is reformed, and it is time that we begin our mission in earnest. The Order will need leaders, and though Meryl may be an experienced mage, he is no strategist. We have proven ourselves capable in both our past exploits and the present, meaning that we are the perfect candidate to answer the call and lead the Tiris Guard in the war against the Legion. Very well. Here, in presence of many of Azeroth's greatest mages, it is my honor to dub you... Conjurer of the Tiris Guard. This ancient title symbolizes the awesome responsibility borne by the Tiris Guard. May you carry it with honor. It is time to meet with our new goblin ally in the war room. You can begin planning your next steps there. I have some personal business to attend to. We pick out our first zone to start questing in, we gain some experience and allies will kick some serious demon butt, and after gaining a bit of strength, we return to the Hall of the Guardian, where the first order of business is to recruit champions of our class to fight by our side. Archmage Kalik and Archmage Modera, they have come to help us succeed. 
I would be glad to lend my skills to the Tyrus Guard, Conjurer. I have heard great things about you. My strength is yours, friend. Together, we will protect Azeroth. It's a good thing too, since there's plenty of work to do. Archmage Omniara, a renowned summoner, she was on her way to the Hall of the Guardians when she was attacked. Gaelic is sent out to help her, and after doing so, she comes back and offers her services in summoning multiple water elementals. We can join our champions on their missions. Now that we've recruited some troops, we can send them out to help survivors near the Broken Shore, and amongst the survivors, they find Chronicler Elrian. She's a well-respected archivist from the Kirintor. She even spends several months studying with the Pandaren at the Tia Monastery, and her knowledge of ancient magic that will allow us to upgrade the Order Hall. While we're busy with getting the Order Hall up and running, Archmage Vargov keeps acting strangely emoting some twitchy and very weird things. Perhaps his long service has finally caught up to him, since Vargov, he was part of the Alliance expedition as they ventured forth through the Dark Portal to take the battle to the Horde. As you probably know, this expedition was eventually forced to shut down the Dark Portal, closing up the way back home, and Vargo found himself in the area known as Netherstorm. His village eventually came under attack by Kilfa Sunshine and his Blood Elves, who killed all the people in their village, except for the Archmage himself. He was locked up within his Violet Tower, sensing that his apprentice Ravandweer, who was sent away with his staff during the attack, that he was still alive. Through the staff, they worked with us to save the Archmage and set him free. He would go back to Dalaran, where we could find him after completing the higher learning achievements. He then showed up in Mount Hyjal during the Cataclysm, and he even made his way to the Isle of Thunder during Mr. Pandaria. With War of Draenor, the Archmage started to send artifacts from the main timeline into alternate Draenor, artifacts which we collected and we brought to Zuti Fizzlefury, Vargos' most trusted friends, who summoned his image to Draenor. Now, with Legion, he is part of the Council of Six, and something's up, but the Archmage does have a quest for us. The Broken Isles are the epicenter of ancient Night Elf and learning, so there must be countless magical artifacts secreted away in forgotten vaults and reliquaries. We must secure them, so they do not fall in the wrong hands, so our champions are sent out to search for them. I... I am needed elsewhere. Our champions are able to find some very powerful artifacts, and Archmage Vargo's longtime apprentice Ravandweer, he has arrived here in the Hall of the Guardian with an urgent message from his mentor. Well met, friend. I will help how I can. Are you as excited as I am to be here? I think that cough is getting worse. The powerful magic that our champions discovered, it's emanating from this secretive Empyrean society enclave within Azuna. Ravandweer was asked by Vargov to request Meryl's aid in investigating it, but as we can see, Meryl is clearly too ill to travel at the moment, so instead it will be up to us to go in his place. <coughs> hmm. Perhaps you should get some rest, Meryl. Until Meryl, we meet please again. Please get some rest. Conjurer, I hope to see you in Azuna shortly. Yes, I think I will. Thank you for taking over for me. The Imperian Society is a dangerous cult which claims to study all magic regardless of its source, but in reality, they focus mostly on the forbidden. We'll need to prove ourselves in order to gain entrance into their society by collecting a pearl of arcane wisdom and scrolls from the depth beneath Narvala's academy. They hate Koyal Naga in the area, they've been kind enough to collect these already, so we take them out and we steal what we need. Hisara, be on your guard while inside the Imperian Enclave. Always. But why the warning? Even experienced mages have an alarming tendency to disappear here, and we could really use you in the Tyrus Guard. Look, my favorite conjurer has arrived. Now that we appear to be a new recruit, we should be able to ask some questions and take a look around for the strange magic that was detected. Let me know if you need my help. Your with friend anything. is right. We should work together. As Sarah Varinda, a Blood Elf Magister, joins us and the Magisters, they're one of the three major factions in the government of Quelphalus, with the Far Striders and the Blood Knights filling up the other two. They are led by Grand Magister Romov, who is appointed as Sarah to be their Seeker of Wisdom, the one who travels the world in search of magical knowledge on the Magister's behalf. Most Cinderai, they dislike being on the road that much, but she was never like most Cinderai and quite enjoys traveling around. Never want to hold her opinions back, it was a relief for both Romuff and Azera when he appointed her to be the Seeker. She has come here to investigate if the Imperian Society possesses anything of use to them, but questioning the members, it offers very little information. I don't see anything unusual about this brazier. It looks to be in pretty good shape for something so ancient. There's a fell rune locking that door. 
The Empyrean Society should not be using such magic. Lovely view up here. Hmm. Now that book warrants a closer look. More Kirintor spies! Your friend has been dealt with. Now it is your turn! This society is using fell magic, something that we cannot allow, so we must confiscate as many of their fell inscribed books as we can. Since Ravandweer appears to be delayed, it looks like we'll have to deal with this ourselves. We kill the members and we remove this sect so that they can't corrupt anyone else. As we loot the bodies of the fallen, we find a rune of opening, which will allow us to unlock the Imperian Society building door and check out the one place that we haven't investigated yet. Oh no, Ravandweer! I could use my sword, but I'd hate to dull it on the likes of you! Well, that Ravendweer, was uncomfortable. You should not have you gone came just alone. in time. Ravandweer got himself caught as he was trying to snoop around for a bit, and appears that Vargo's strange behavior, that's related to the Imperian Society. Several members called out his name, and on the body of Nora Blackfire, we find a missive from the Archmage himself sealed off with fell magic. It's hard to believe that Vargov would involve himself with such a malevolent group, but we must inform Meryl about what we've uncovered. Let me know if you need my help. I will see it. you back in the Hall of the Guardian. Isara, you are welcome to join us there. I'll do that. See you soon. Gadgar, thank you for coming so quickly. He is declining rapidly. Hmm. This illness is magical in nature. You were right to summon me, Ravensweer. Meryl is still far too sick to be of any help, while Kedgar is troubled by Vargo's involvement with the society. He has proven his loyalty to the Kirintor many times over, so we must give him the benefit of the doubt. Still, we should share our concerns with the rest of the council. Now Ravandweer and Ezera, they decide to stick around and become our champions, while Grand Conjurer Mimic, she's arrived in the Order Hall to help out with training. Only the most promising apprentices will be trained to become new recruits to be sent out with our champions. At the Violet Citadel, we talk with the council and we inform them them about what we discovered. We do not tolerate misconduct amongst our own, Conjurer. However, if your accusation against Archmage Vargoth proves malicious, know that the consequences will be severe. And Serum, I've been following the Conjurer for some time now, and these are not spurious charges. I too observed Archmage Vargoth behaving oddly. As have I. He has been quite preoccupied of late. And Serum will be shocked if it's actually true that Varkov is exploring fell magic, but we are allowed to check out his living quarters to see if we can find any clues. Portal coming up. This is a nice space for a mortal. Let's see what secrets it is hiding. We find a crystal ball, which was once used by Gromash Hellscream during a mission in Warcraft 3. In that game, it dropped off a ghost in the forest of Ashenvale that would reveal a target area of the map. Mortals and their crystal balls. Although this one may actually be more than just a novelty. A frosted donut is left behind. Ah, oh, that stinks! It's covered in mold! Archmage Vargoth has been away longer than I thought. There's a magical tome. Fascinating. This is a spellbook of ancient nightborn rituals. I must borrow it sometime. A journal. Wait, is that a journal you found? That may be what we're looking for. And a well-worn scroll. Now this is interesting. I had no idea Archmage Vargoth was also interested in the breeding habits of angelfish. Farko's journal has notes on the Nightborn Soulstone. Supposedly, the energy of captured souls stored within it, it can be channeled directly from the stone. Vargo seems to be mixed up in something dangerous, which is not that unusual for an Archmage of his caliber and experience. The Arcway Vault may be where he's headed, but we should investigate all leads in order to get a better idea of what exactly he's up to. A perfect task for our champions, who are sent out to investigate Vargo's travels. They check out the Nightborn Vault deep within the leads and incursion area of Sudamar, the ruins of Narfalas Academy, the graveyard site of Telenor, the place where the magical tome came from, the forest of Ashenville, where Grom once upon a time used the crystal ball, and we send them to Alternate Draenor to have a chat with Zuri Fizzlefury at Katkar's tower in Talador. After checking out all the leads, our champions eventually find Vargov entering the Arkway vaults within Sudamar. They were unable to get very far considering the massive legion presence there, but perhaps will have better luck. Hold on tightly, my mortal friend. A fall from this height would be a shame.
The Arcway vaults have likely been breached by Legion invaders, as well as our old friend, Milhouse Manastorm. Although he is far from trustworthy, I suspect we may be able to take advantage of his rather creative skills. Milhouse Manastorm, once a prisoner turned to our enemy, a fighter in the Brawler's Guild, until he showed up on Drenor claiming that he had changed his ways. He has been quite vocal about wanting to acquire the Nightborn Soulstone, so if we find him inside, we may as well make use of him. Now our champions, they were unable to follow Varkov in, but they have made quite a dent in thinning out the enemy's numbers. They also discovered a number of starving prisoners, so while we search for Varkov, we also make sure to feed them some conjured food, and we take out as many of the demons as we can. Hey you, help a fellow mage out! That demon Norvir has the key! Milhouse found himself captured by the demons, so we collect the key from Inquisitor Norvir and we set him free. That was a bit of a pickle. Thanks. You must be the one I've been hearing so much about lately. Milhouse, you certainly are quite talented at getting yourself into a bind. <laughs> Archmage Vargoth is after the Nightborn Soulstone as well. You two should work together to find him before he locates it. What? The Nightborn Soulstone is mine! Let's go get it! Uh-oh, it looks like the inner vault has been breached. We'd better see if the Nightborn Soulstone has been taken. Blast! It's gone! That Vargoth is going to be sorry when I catch up with him. He was here very recently. He can't have gotten too far ahead. The Nightborn Soulstone is mine. You are becoming quite a nuisance. Lady Kyraneth, meet me at the Oculus once you've taken care of our overly ambitious friends here. With pleasure. This one's mine! You face Millhouse the Magnificent! No! He will not get away with this! This is a terrible turn of events. It has been confirmed. Vargov has been corrupted by the Legion. These are dark times when even the most upstanding of us can fall. We had best informed Ketgar of Vargov's betrayal, while Milhouse, he is willing to stick around and become our champion as our hunt for the Soulstone continues. You seem I troubled. I must speak with the Council. Until we meet again, my mortal friend. It's painfully obvious that you could use someone of my considerable talent. Let us join forces to go after Vargoth and the Soulstone. Vargoth's betrayal is an unimaginable loss to our cause, and we'll have to deal with him, but first we need to focus on Metal. His condition has become dire, and what they first believe to be an illness is not an illness at all. It's actually a magic attack of fell origin, which may be caused by his old nemesis, Kafranatir. All we can do at the moment is try and buy him some time by collecting a vial of water from the wrath of Azara's body. The potent arcane energies, they should be able to sustain him for a while, and after taking care of Meryl, it's finally time to focus on Vargov. During our encounter, he told Kiranif to meet him at the Oculus, which means that the heavily shielded area, it has fallen to the Legion. We send out our champions to figure out a way to get inside. There's Veridisa of the Green Dragonflight, who's asked for help in capturing roving Sado warbands within the area of Valshera. There's Belgaristras of the Red Dragonflight, who has made contact with plans to retake the Oculus, plans that require as many Legion communications as can be found. We'll also need to boost our power if we are to break through the wards surrounding the Oculus, so they go out to the Ley Ruins of Zarkanar to collect Ley Energy, while Eternos of the Bronze Dragonflight, he's reported the Legion invasions near the Bronze Dragon Shrine in Dragonblight. We go out to help the Bronze Dragonflight. Now the dragons, Verdisa, Belgarstras, and Eternals, they are reluctant to return to the Oculus themselves, but some of their strongest drakes, they are willing to aid us if we clear the way. Our champions do some fine work, and we should be able to get into the Oculus now, but we must not forget that our primary mission is to repel the demons and protect the world. 30 world quests have to be completed, and with all of that done, we can finally travel into the Oculus and confront Vargov. We cannot permit his betrayal to stand unpunished, and Ketkar suspects that Vargov, that he is somehow involved with Kafranatir's attacks on Meryl. Which means that we get to go to everyone's favorite dungeon and kill the demon's presence, while also destroying five of the Legion portals. The dragons, true to the word, they did indeed show up to help in the assault, and in the center, at the Band of Transmutation, we find Vargov imprisoned by three Legion Magi. We kill Felmages Mordris, Alironia, and Korvir, setting Vargov free. You have my thanks. I've been hanging there for an eternity. 
turns out that the Archmage never willingly betrayed our cause. He was contacted by an emissary of the Imperian Society while gathering notes on the Nightborn Soulstone. When he arrived at their enclave, our old nemesis Kafranadir was waiting. The Dreadlord has been in his head ever since, controlling his every word and action. He is now using the Nightborn Soulstone and the power of the Nexus to attack Meryl to drain him of his power. Together, we might be able to stop him, so we quickly go down below to confront Kafranadir. Light we lesson. should head to ground level. Let me know when you are ready, and I will teleport us there. Catherine is in the Nexus building. It appears to be heavily guarded. Perhaps we should use an invisibility spell and walk right in. Invisibility will not last long. Let's go! We made it. Kathranater is inside, just ahead. There's the Nightborn Soulstone. He's using it against an image of Meryl. Did you really think you could defeat me, little mage? I am invincible! Once more, we fight with Kathranater, and we do not stand alone for very long, as the entire council shows up. Together we can defeat Kathranater. Use the Nightborn Soulstone while we hold him off. You have done it. Kathra Natir is safely imprisoned within the Nightborn Soulstone. Well done, my mortal friend. We should bring that back to the Hall of the Guardian for safekeeping. I would not have thought it possible had I not witnessed it myself. Bravo. Thanks to you, a great weight has been lifted. Let us return to the Hall of the Guardian. It is sobering to think how easily Catherine Atir subverted my will. Thanks to your hard work, I am free, and he is not. When you defeated Catherine Atir, I felt a great weight leave my mind. Ah. <sighs> I have not been this well in an eternity. The Nightborn Soulstone has rendered Kathra Natir completely powerless. You have my utmost gratitude. I think our luck is changing for the better, old friend. With our newest Archmage and the might of the Tiris Guard, we will defeat the Burning Legion. You are a shining example of the strength of the new Tiris Guard. To our newest Archmage! Finally, the Nightborn Soulstone! All mine. I mean, ours, of course. Unfortunately, we will be unable to keep that promise, Milhouse. So long as the Soulstone serves as Kathran Atir's prison, it is best left untouched. I'm sure there are plenty of other powerful artifacts out there for you to find. Blast! I'm not your friend anymore. Milhouse doesn't like us very much anymore, but that's okay though, I'm sure that he'll come around. Kedgar is amazed with what we've accomplished and proud to henceforth name us Archmage. Fargor and Meryl, they both offer themselves as champions in the war against the Legion. Come, meet me by the Forge of the Guardian. Your choice to seek out that artifact you wield has borne fruit. I'm not sure I've ever seen so close a bond between mage and weapon. The victories you've achieved for the Tiris Guard, along with the resources you've gained, shall allow us to unlock the artifact's full potential. Raise your weapon before the Forge of the Guardian. Let it infuse your weapon with might. May your weapon serve you well on the path to victory. And with that, we've reached the end of the Mage Order Hall campaign, and now you know what happened with Vargov and the Council of Six. I personally can't wait for Chronicle Volume 3 to release. Hopefully that will explain a bit more as to what exactly happened with Kafranatir and all of that, but that's something for the future. For now, the Dreadlord is safely imprisoned within the Soulstone, and our war against the Legion continues. Which means that we've reached the end of the video, so as always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys! See ya!